This sculpture took over five months to design and build, literally thousands of hours of 3D printing. And honestly, I don't really wanna talk about how much it costs. If you're wondering why I went through all the trouble to design and build this thing, it's because I have this problem and I'm willing to bet that you have this problem too. Like Buddy over here, I'm addicted to my phone. Now I came to the realization of this problem one day when I was out for a walk, minding my own business. When I turned my head to the left, and this is what I saw. Literally three people, I'm pretty sure that they were all together, walking in a single file, and they were all looking down at their phones. My first thought was, humanity is doomed and I wanna do something about it. My second thought was, this would make a great sculpture. Now I'm not exactly sure I went from wanting to do something about my phone addiction to building a two-story, massive conveyor belt bunk bed sculpture. It may have been inspired by the music video from Pink Floyd The Wall, but the game plan is, there's gonna be two massive conveyor belts, these little figurines are gonna be picked up by a pick and place device and placed onto the top of the upper conveyor belt. And they're gonna travel down that conveyor belt, single file in a row until they reach a wall at the end. At which point, because they're looking down at their phone, they're just gonna run into it and start piling up until they fall off the wall and end up on the bottom conveyor belt doing it all over again. The crashing into the wall part is literally the entire reason I'm building this. I have no idea what's gonna happen and that is super exciting. This is probably the scariest project that I've done so far because all the pieces are so big Big, that when it's finally time to go to print, it's a full commitment. This top conveyor belt, for example, is made up of 90 links and they each take an hour and a half to print. So if I got that piece wrong, that means that I'd either have to reprint 90 pieces or fix 90 pieces. On top of this project being so scary because of how big it is, starting anything from scratch is a really daunting process. I've been doing this for 15 years and it still hasn't gotten easier. So I can only imagine if you wanted to make something, how hard it might be for you to figure out where to begin. And that brings us to this video's sponsor, a company called Cadmore. It doesn't matter if you have a fully fleshed out idea or just a sketch on the back of a napkin, Cadmore will work with you to figure out what you're trying to make and turn that into a fully 3D manufacturable file that you could then use to progress from the idea stage to the next step to bringing your ideas into reality. Maybe you have a 3D printer and you wanna design something to put on that printer, or you have something around your home that you think you can make an improvement on, or you have some wild invention that you know is gonna make you rich. It doesn't matter, Cadmore is here to help you out. If you have an idea that you want to bring to life, check out jbvcreative.cadmore.com to get some more information. This company is incredible and I'm so excited to introduce them to you because there's nothing quite like the feeling of bringing your ideas into life. All right, back to the bunk belts. Let's do it. This top conveyor belt is probably the biggest thing that I've ever made and it was so much fun that we're gonna do it again for the bottom. Let's go. I knew things were going way too smoothly with this build. It's impossible to design something this, this big as fast as I did and not have even a small mistake. The motor does not fit where it's supposed to go, but I think we can fix it pretty easily. Bada bing, bada boom. Moment of truth, let's go. We are in business! You are gonna go right there, like this. That's so rewarding. This is a whole project all on its own. But man, it looks so good. All right, let's keep going.
This is literally the first time that fatigue is a factor in one of my builds. So my wrist is so sore. It is finally time to stack the conveyor belts. If I was to tell you that I had a whole plan on how to make this happen, I would be lying. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this. I have an idea. What are you stuck on now? Oh, never mind. We're good. We're good. We're just sitting on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Where are my screws? Ah. Oh. I have a better idea. Perfect. Why I haven't been using my drill this whole time, I have no idea. Maybe I was trying to give myself a wrist workout. Get your mind out of the gutter. Whoa, parkour! It's finally time to work on the catching part of this mechanism. I have a game plan which is to use like a mesh here, but I don't really know if it's gonna work. And there's really, there's no way for me to test this part until I got here. Should it be a slide? All right, I already printed all the parts out for the mesh. So I might as well try that first. And if I'm not satisfied with that, we can try something else. I don't know, there's a big part of me that's thinking that I have to go with the slide concept. I think I'm gonna try prototyping a slide out of cardboard and I really hope it looks like crap because if it doesn't, we're gonna have to full send on it. Industrial designer Jay has stepped in here and he's made the final call and that is slide. So, engineer Jay, it's time to get to work to figure this thing out. Crazy day designing this slide. We have all the machines working together to print the parts. In the morning, we'll have a fun slide. Slide done. We can't take for granted the fact that in 24 hours you can go from nothing to a full slide. That is amazing. But does it work? <laughs> yes, it does. Oh, we need to put this thing on the conveyor belt. Let's go. First official installed slide test. Oh no. Have to put a barrier here. All right, second official slide test. Oh my God, that is violent. All right, uh, let's build the other side. With both slides installed, the last stage of the assembly process is to install the pick and place device. Originally, I decided to go with this cam based pick and place device. But during the design process, industrial designer Jay decided that it should be a robot arm. Actually, I think it was just engineer Jay that wanted to build a robot arm. And industrial designer Jay decided, why not? So robot arm it was. And I designed the whole thing as a module that attaches into the front of the conveyor belt system. The way it works is when Buddy comes off the lower conveyor belt and falls into the orientation device, this sensor indicates that Buddy is ready for positioning. This motor starts to rotate Buddy until the magnet sensor in the back of the positioning device senses the magnet embedded in Buddy's butt. That's right, Buddy does have an attractive butt. At that point, the robot arm comes down, slides its grip around Buddy's neck, lifts Buddy up, and carefully places Buddy onto the top conveyor belt. This way, as all the buddies are going down the conveyor, they're all facing the same direction. And that brings us to the last thing this conveyor belt needs, which hopefully will answer the question as to why the slides are going off the side. And that is this wall right here. The buddies will pile up against the wall, one by one, while never looking up from their phones. Until eventually, they slide back down and do it all over again. 
The creation of Buddy was quite the process because I really wanted to expand my horizons and do something that was more than just a 3D printed part. Originally, I thought maybe that I would try to make this thing out of foam. I got all the supplies. I don't want to tell you how much I spent on the supplies, but it was a lot. And I made mold after mold after mold. I tried cast after cast after cast. Everything that I got kind of looked a little bit like it was delivered in discreet packaging at my door. Finally, I got something that was looking a little bit more like Buddy. I think we were onto like a, a three piece mold. Ultimately, this figurine wasn't originally designed to be something that you could mold. And it's always important to keep that in mind when you're starting the process. But I'd ended up with this figurine shape and I didn't want to change it. But at the beginning of the mold making process, I actually coated this buddy in epoxy to create a smooth castable piece. Finally, I realized that this coating was actually perfect for the entire set of buddies. So I 3D printed 18 of these figurines. I wanted Buddy to balance on its base. And the way to do that was to weight down the base such that the center of mass of Buddy was really low. And that way it would always flip back up to center. I got my wife involved in the process and we painted all 18 of them with this epoxy resin. It was quite a challenge because you only get 10 minutes per mix. So we could only really do two buddies at a time. Three hours later, we just finished coating all of the buddies in epoxy. That was a slog. Oh. The craziest thing is they went through this whole ordeal for three hours getting smeared on and not a single one of them looked up from their phone. And with that, it is finally time to show you this thing in all its glory. Let's do it. Of course, the irony here is not lost on me. I've created a sculpture depicting technological addiction, and the only way for me to share it with you is through this same technology. I don't think it's all or nothing with technology. I think there's a balance just like everything else in life. At the end of the day, this is a sculpture. It's not gonna change anything, but it will hopefully add to the conversation and make us think. I'm very proud of the way that this project turned out. It was scary. I really put off doing it for a very long time. But as I mentioned earlier, there's nothing like making your ideas come to life. For those of you who have been here since the beginning, I see you. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video.